Hello, I'm Wesley Snipes. I want to talk about my friend Spike Lee. <laughs> you don't know that this Spike Lee comes from a village in Africa called Brooklyn. <laughs> it is part of the West, West Africa side. You know they have a lot of uh, people there in this village. They are known for their artisans. They are known for their ability to do uh, write scripts and the ability to cinematographers, yeah? You heard about this village, yeah? So I want to say something about this spike. Ezekiel Way, Mongol is a Malcolm Mandela. That is his real name. <laughs> How much of an inspiration this man is to me. He's an inspiration because I learned a lot about patience. <laughs> Working with this man, yeah, a lot about patience. And I'm going to tell you a quick story and I'm going to give these movie stars here their time. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I was with Spike, and I had the honor of coming with him to the Oscars to represent the beautiful Queen Mother Ruby D. Yeah? Spike was her date, and I was the body god. <laughs> when, after the show, the award show and everything happened, and we're going out the way, they say we can go up to the party. So. Spike said, Wesley, come with me to the party. I said, oh, I'm going to a party with Spike. This is good, yeah. <laughs> to the governor's party, we get up to the, the desk, and the little girl says, so, excuse me, sir, do you have your ticket? And Spike says, oh, yeah, we have a ticket. And he pulls the ticket out, but it's the wrong ticket. It doesn't have the little orange or red strip on it, you know, to get upstairs. So the lady says, do you have your ticket? He says, this is the ticket. He says, no, sir, this is not the ticket. I'm sorry. Who are you? He says, my name is Spike. She said, what do you say? She said, my name is Spike. She says, OK, sorry, I'm sorry, sir. If you want a beverage, you can go over there. They have the Sprite and Coke and whatever drink that you want over there. So I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, oh my god, they're not going to lie. let Spike go upstairs. He turns to me, he says, this is Wesley Snipes. And she says, who are you? <laughs> so you know what happened? They didn't let us come upstairs to the ball for the governor's ball. And we stand downstairs there. And I'm looking like, I can't believe it. They don't let Spike Lee upstairs. OK. So I want to say why this is about perseverance and patience. Because look at this here. <laughs> I can't believe it. They didn't want you to come upstairs before the years. But look, and now they're giving you an award. <laughs> to all of you who are actors, to all of you who are trying this business, it is important to understand that sometimes you might not get the award for your craft, your acting, or your singing, or your dancing. All you have to do is write some script, write some controversial subject matter, say something that's going to piss a lot of people off, and sooner or later, you will too be here getting an award. Good for you. Good for you. I love you, Spike And we get, we go to the bottom of the we go back. Keep going. Keep going. It's a true story. <laughs> Well, there you have it. <laughs> Spike, we're here for you. Our partner, pioneer, phenomenon, prophet, pain. <laughs> we love you, and we're here for you. Sam? Really? Yeah, man. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> Spike Lee. But first, you want anything you want to throw in the West? Well, I want to say something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Spike Lee, uh, Denzel and I were doing a soldier's play at the Negro Ensemble Company when we met Spike Lee. Right. And, yeah, he came to the play. And he told us he was going to be a director. We were like, all right, sure. 
Uh, said I'm at NYU Film School doing a movie right now, Joe's Bed-Stuy Barbershop. We cut we heads. Cut heads. And we like, yeah, all right. Uh, come down, check it out. I went down there. Did you go down there? No, I ain't go. I went down there and looked at the film. <laughs> and he told me, you know, he was going to make a film. Coming up. I'm like, out of sight. Mohawk's man, we down. Okay, great. Mohawk's, yeah. And then he made She's Gotta Have It, and I wasn't in it. I wasn't in it. I wasn't, wasn't in it. Wesley, was you in it? Don't talk about the movies I wasn't in. <laughs> okay. All right. So I said, so that's that same dude that came by here and told us we were going to be in his movies, right? Right. And we weren't in his movie. Right. Then he started doing his next movie, School Days. <laughs> I finally got a call, and I worked three hours on that movie. It's like, he looking out for his Morehouse brother. Yeah, right on, mm -hmm. right on. And then he do the right thing. But by then, he, he actually had my phone number. So Spike had this unique casting thing he would do. He would call, Sam, Spike, do the right thing, June. Click. <laughs> it's like, does that mean I got a job? So, sure enough, I had a job. I did do the right thing. Next summer, Sam, Spike, Low Supreme, click. That turned out to be Mo Better Blue. Better Blue. I did that. Next summer, Sam, Spike, Jungle Fever, click. But I was in rehab, so. <clears throat> <laughs> so thank God um, Spike didn't recast the role because I was in rehab because I was actually in rehab because I had done the research to do Jungle Feet. <laughs> which actually worked out very well for me, which um, got me, actually got me to Hollywood, which was awesome. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so, Thank you, Spike, for hanging in there with her brother and uh, getting me here. But through all that and through doing all those films, we all discovered that Spike makes films that are very personal to Spike, that he hopes an audience will embrace. But you really think he care? I mean, he, he wants you to like his films and he wants you to embrace them in a way, but he tells stories and he tells them in a way that he doesn't really embrace the fact of people's feelings being hurt, or... He don't pay nobody either. He don't pay nobody. <laughs> well, did we you did. Get paid? Did you get paid? I used to steal Nike stuff out of the basement because right. we had all this stuff <laughs> stashed in the basement. So I'd go down and get some shoes, shirt, right. something, you know. But yeah, scale plus 10. Scale plus Made 10. me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but um, Spike, Spike, Spike makes films from his heart, except for Inside Man, which was like a studio movie, and he, yeah, yeah. No, we got paid on. Y'all got paid. Oh, Y'all got, got paid on that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we still getting paid. You still getting paid. Oh, in that movie. you in that? No, me either. Me either. <laughs> me either. But um, Spike has gone on to tell the story of Katrina, um, three little girls. He makes amazing, amazing, amazing documentaries. Um, he actually did a film about um, a really, we had a really, really great basketball player that played for the Lakers for a long time. He's still playing for them, but that's another story. Um, and uh, he makes these wonderful, wonderful films and documentaries, and he's, he's told the story of our people in his way. Uh, and his politics are the politics of, I guess, you know, an American anarchist in a way. And I like that about him. I've always been, I guess, on the other side of that also. So it's, it's, it's been a wonderful journey with a wonderful friend who um, inspires me a lot. And it was always wonderful to have the summer at Spike Lee's film camp with all the wonderful actors that were around us, Bill Nunn, Fish, D, Wes, <coughs> Giancarlo. There are a lot of people that have come out of what Spike started and allowed us to be a bigger part of and learn how to work in films um, that have become sort of staples in this business that we have called Hollywood. 
Um, so thank you for that, Spike. In front of for, and behind the camera. Yeah, in front of and behind. Yeah, Ernest, Ernest Dickinson, you know, a lot of people um, have, have done that. And, Spike and, Lee and, has put more African Americans to work in this business, in this business than anyone else in the history of this business. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> and hey, don't call me Tyler Perry. Don't you call me. <laughs> And, Spike was first. Yeah, right. And um, all those years when Spike made those films that were so great, like Do the Right Thing, historical film. Uh, Mo Better Blues, awesome film. You know, Jungle Fever, awesome films. Films that never were in 3,000 or 2,000 theaters, but they had to compete with films that were. Uh, and they still made money, and they are still being watched by audiences all over the world. Uh, and he's inspired an amazing number of young African Americans and Hispanics and Asian people to go out and learn the film business and become film directors because he made it viable to tell your story your way. <clears throat> and for all those times that you didn't get that statue spike and all those other things that didn't happen, your community loved you and we still love you. And, uh, these days, I have an even greater reason to love Spike, because he actually directs my Capital One commercials. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're knocking it out. Uh, so now, instead of uh, me asking that other question, I can ask you tonight, Spike, what's on your mantle? Please come receive your honorary should be official, Academy Award for being just a, I'm gonna say it, bad motherfucker. <laughs>